Warning. The following recording contains highly classified information from the Onu Metru Stasis Foundation, OSF. All viewings must be approved by the Chief Archivist or by the leader of Metronui. Any unauthorized viewings will be subject to disciplinary action by the OSF. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anipu, and the specimen we will be covering today is Rahi 6935. We'll start off with a description. Rahi 6935 is an enigmatic entity that thrives in darkness and shadow. Earliest sightings of the creature have shown its ability to take on several forms. Its most notable form is described to be a matoran sized bipedal creature with claws for hands and a head resembling a skakti. Though rarely witnessed, Rahi 6935 is also known to take on a more dangerous form, this form being described as a dark, gigantic figure, roughly the size of whatever space it is inhabiting, that has tentacles protruding from the creature's back. Early encounters with Rahi 6935 indicate that it only takes its second form whenever a witness is physically close to it. Those who are in close proximity with Rahi 6935 are rarely spared and are most often instantly killed or mutilated by the creature. Rahi 6935 has been described to instantly appear and disappear during encounters, possibly indicating it possesses teleportation powers. Rahi 6935 is usually witnessed in interior spaces, with little or no light, or during night, presumably due to an aversion to light sources though there is no direct evidence that light causes any significant harm to the entity. Rahi 6935 appears to have some level of sapience, though its more than erratic behavior has made it difficult to attempt any form of communication. Next slide, please. Ah, this is a weird bit. Rahi 6935 is known to leave a dark liquid protodermis on the floor wherever it appears and on its victims. Early testings of the dark liquid on Rahi have shown it has a corrupting property, more potent than a similar substance we know of called antidermis. Rahi who ingest the dark liquid exhibit highly volatile and murderous behavior, similar to Rahi 6935, whilst gaining significantly amplified strength and speed. These effects do not last long as the Rahi soon dies from irreversible brain damage. Though confirmed highly hazardous to Rahi of lower sapiens, the liquid has yet to be tested on creatures or species of higher sapiens. History Early records of Rahi 6935 indicates the creature predates the creation of our universe and originally came from some place beyond. No evidence of how it was created has been found. A leading theory has speculated the entity was naturally formed, and was forcefully brought into our universe by the great being as a form of imprisonment. Though others have hypothesized it was created by the great beings, or Matanui himself as a form of punishment. No hard evidence has yet been found to support these hypotheses. Early artifacts recovered by the Brotherhood of Makuta show depictions of Rahi 6935 accompanied with archaic writings describing it as the evil one or, when more literally translated, the bad guy. It is speculated the entity may have corrupted the Makuta, as reports indicate that it is now worshipped by the Makuta as some sort of deity. Rahi 6935 is said to have had a hand in many major wars and conflicts throughout our history, including the conquest of the League of Six Kingdoms, the Matoran Civil War, and the Toa Dark Hunter War. Repeated evidence of its dark liquid protodermis residue has been found in various battlefields with high casualty rates. Additionally, Rahi 6935 is said to have influenced Rahi creation itself, particularly the earliest known undersea Rahi, and unusual Rahi like the Gate Guardian. A similar dark liquid has been found in some captured Rahi specimens, pointing to possible tampering. The creature has been sighted throughout the Matoran universe on many occasions, Though historically, witnesses of Rahi 6935 were either ignored by their peers or were subsequently killed. What's more, it has recently been seen lurking in lower levels of the archives for reasons unknown. On to containment procedures. Recent attempts to contain or capture the creature have proven unsuccessful and have, tragically, often resulted in no survivors. 
To reduce encounters with Rahi 6935, additional artificial lights and light vines have been installed throughout various levels of the archives. Less maintained or abandoned levels have been left untouched due to resource shortages, however. Standard Onimatoran archivists have been trained to not wander off into these restricted levels. Crucially, all information, rumors, or sightings related to Rahi 6935 are to be brushed off as speculation and or symptoms of exhaustion or hallucination. Any damage, injuries, or casualties caused by Rahi 6935 are to be brushed off as maintenance accidents, equipment misuse, natural phenomena, and or a loose common Rahi. OSF personnel are to be alerted about an affected area as soon as possible for evidence collection and cleaner. Addendum. The following is an archived recording of former researcher and ancient Rahi expert Mavra explaining the nature of Rahi 6935 in his own words. While studying the ancient Rahi of the distant past, I have made a remarkable discovery. It appears that these first Rahi have some deep connection with Rahi 6935 in which the two share similar materials. You see, while examining these undersea Rahi, I have noticed a very particular black liquid protodermis-like matter surging through the veins of these creatures. This shadow protodermis appears to share similar makeup to the scratch marks that appeared during the Archives Massacre so many millennia ago. Some archivists say a dangerous Rahi went loose and killed those Matoran, but I don't think so. No records show any sort of breach or escape of Rahi at the time. Additionally, this shadow protodermis is never identified with any no Rahi in the archives at the time. It is a far-fetched theory, but I believe Rahi 6935 is deeply involved in the archives massacre and has an ancient origin, possibly going back even before these first Rahi. Perhaps the great being saw Rahi 6935's potential to create monsters, or the entity created them. More studies on the first Rahi will need to be conducted before I could get a solid conclusion. As long as Turagadum is willing to support it. The following is an archived recording of an eyewitness account of Rahi 6935 from the Rahi receiving official, Nuparu. Look, I know I was not supposed to be down there in the lower levels, but you've got to warn everyone. I saw things. Very strange things. Uh huh. And what might that be? I was just going through the place, you know, the abandoned levels, to find and salvage any kind of materials I could find. Metallic protodermis, leftover stasis tubes, gears, you know, the typical stuff. As I was going through and getting some parts, I saw something behind me. I can't really explain it. <laughs> Try me. It looked like a huge shadow just loomed over me. My light stone went completely black, and all I could see were these gigantic red eyes and glowing sharp teeth. I tried running, but some tentacle or arm grabbed my leg and pulled me back. It made this horrible scream. I could barely think during that moment. I tried grabbing anything I could that was in front of me as it dragged me across the floor. But luckily, I was able to pull some nearby light vines that started to glow. Then, I woke up. Like it was a dream. Everything was back to normal. No shadow, no red eyes, nothing. Whatever is down there, hope we have a Toa to address it. Nuparu, I think you're just exhausted from wandering the lower levels for too long, which you aren't supposed to do. You think I made this up? Well, why would I even tell you all of this? I saw something awful and scary down there. We gotta close that place off or something. Close it up so that you can just have everything to yourself. Yeah, no, that isn't happening. And the Toa don't have time to listen to your excuses. In that case, I'll take care of it myself. When I finish the Crawley, you will see. I'll capture it myself. Go ahead, waste your time catching shadows. The following is an archived recording of former researcher Wenua explaining the history and legends surrounding Rahi 6935. Much of the early records of the supposed Rahi 6935 can be found 
on an ancient tablet stored in a great temple, which dated to the years of Metru Nui's founding. I have studied the tablet deeply and even asked the Gamma Doran for assistance in translation. Based on our findings, it appears the tablet was not made of protodermis at all and does not seem to belong in the Motoran universe. It appears that it was brought into this universe. Whoever made it is unknown, though perhaps the great beings created this tablet as a warning for us. The tablet describes a dark entity that came from a distant place. This entity was described as the embodiment of evil and chaos that consumed others to gain power. It has lived on the ground of this place for the longest of times until it was released from the prison. The tablet describes that this entity caused a great war and then was later trapped somewhere in this universe temporarily until someone can figure out a way to permanently defeat it. The bottom of the tablet finally tells of a prophesied being that would rid of this dark creature the climatic battle which will bring the end of the Matoran universe as we know it. Whether I believe this tablet to be genuine or some hoax is something I still can't wrap my head around to this day. I think eventually we will see if this comes to pass. The following is a written tablet of a first-hand witness of Rahi 6935, supposedly involved in the Archive's massacre, found on the island of Stelt, the writer, unknown. Though the war was happening on the surface above, I didn't mind. I kept to my duties in the Archives, storing the artifacts the best I could while the ceiling shook from explosions and stomping of troops. It was rare to see armies march through the archives, especially the lower levels. So when I saw those troops walk down into the tunnels out of nowhere, I knew something was very odd. I hid myself and watched, out of curiosity. The Matoran carried their makeshift weapons, shields and such, as they always did. But the looks on their faces seemed emotionless, like they were in a trance. I saw legions and battalions make their way into the large room I had just organized a few days back. This room was a simple storage area for little arts and crafts, hawks, vases, and sculptures from Pometri. Nothing much of value. Why go there? As I creeped closer to see what they were doing, the giant door of the rooms quickly slammed shut. Then I heard things that I could never forget. The screams, the piercing screams. I heard the agony and terror of hundreds of Matoran hollering for their dear lives as something arrived to seal their fate. The sound of metal parts crunching and scraping echoed through the tunnel. I heard one Matoran begging to be spared, but next thing I heard was silence, a dead silence. It was a silence that I have never heard or felt, and I worked alone in these tunnels. Once the screams went away, I saw the door open slowly. The stench coming out was unbearable. It smelled of death. And there, a strange, dark shadow made its way out of the opening. Its red eyes, glowing teeth, still haunt me to this day. It looked at me, attentively, as if it wanted to make me its next victim. I quickly turned around and crouched, shielding my eyes, and as I turned my head back to meet my end, it was gone. Whatever I saw, it was no Rahi I know of, and I prayed to Matanui that I never see this thing ever again. I have since run from Matanui, knowing the other Matoran on the island won't believe what I saw. By the time you see this, I have already disappeared so that it won't track me. Hope, oh, this serves as a warning to you. Not far away from where this tablet was found, a mutilated, headless body of an Onomatoran was also discovered with dark liquid protodermis oozing from scar marks. 
Attempts to identify the Matoran were proven unsuccessful. All right, this concludes today's lecture. Thank you all for listening. You're dismissed. Goodbye.